So in future tutorials, we're going to be building projects on our machine. And in order to do that, you're going to have to create folders and files. And you probably don't want to right click every time and push new folder. And there's not even really a new file option on here. So the way that we're going to be getting around our machine is by using the terminal. Yours is probably going to look a little bit differently because I have a plugin on mine that uses GitHub, but everything should work pretty much the same. But if you're running Windows, you're going to have to look up your own commands because these won't work. This will give you a good idea of how to get around the command prompt, but the commands are completely different. So let's get started. Right when we open up our terminal, we're inside of our home directory. If you've run around your machine in your finder, and you see that there's a, a folder that has your name on it, that's your, your home directory. So a way that you can see what directory you're in is by typing PWD, which stands for Present Working Directory. So this first forward slash stands for my hard drive. And then I'm inside of a folder called Users, inside of a folder called J. Allen Cook. So as you're navigating around the machine, you can use PWD to see where you're at if you don't know where the shell is currently located. This will make more sense when we get into these commands. So ls stands for list, and it will list all the files and folders inside that directory. So if I type ls and press enter, so you see these are all the folders inside of that directory. And you notice that there's a desktop folder. Now that brings us to cd, which stands for change directory. So we know right now I'm in a folder called users and a folder called Jade Allen Cook, and inside that folder is applications, documents, blah, 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 and we want to go to the desktop. So we can type CD and then the name of the folder, desktop. And if we type PWD now, you'll see that we're in a folder called users and a folder called Jade Allen Cook inside of a folder called desktop. So this is the desktop folder. So say that we want to go back. We want to go back to the J. Allen Cook folder. To go backwards, you want to do something like this, cd dot dot. And that will take you back a directory. If you want to clear the screen, you just type clear. So we're in my home directory. And inside that directory is a desktop folder. In order for us to navigate our terminal to the desktop folder, we have to type cd, change directory, and then the name of the folder. And if I type ls, you'll see that there's nothing on there. Now, say we want to make a directory. We want to make a folder. We can type mkdir, and then the name of the folder that we want to make. We'll just call it foo. And you see it creates this folder over here called foo. Now we can cd into foo. If I type pwd, you'll see that we're inside users, J. Allen Cook, desktop, inside of another folder called foo, which brings me to touch. So say we want to create a file inside there. Maybe we want to create the index.html file. Here, let me move this over and then open this up in Finder. So the way that you create a file is by typing touch and then the name of the file that you want to create. Let's create index.html. And you'll see that it generated that file. Now, say we want to move this index file to our desktop. But we want to do it with our terminal. So the way that you do that is with the mv command, mv for move. And we're currently inside the foo folder. So if we type pwd, you'll see that we're inside foo. If I type ls, you'll see that there's the index.html. Now I want to move that index.html back a directory. And you'll see that it moved the index out of the foo folder onto the desktop. Let's put it back in there. Index, we want to go back a directory, and 
on the desktop, there's a file called index.html. So one little trick for when you're typing in the name of the files in the directory is you can press the tab key. So if I start typing I in and I press tab, it will automatically complete that for me. And if there isn't a file or folder with that name, it will give you a little error. So it's kind of an auto-completion and debugger. It makes sure that the file or folder is there and you're not just typing in a path that doesn't exist. Anyway, let's move the index.html into the foo folder. And we're currently in the foo folder, so we can say dot, which means right where I'm at. And it moved the index file into the foo folder. So if I type ls, you'll see that we have the index file in there. Now let's say that I want to delete that index file. We can type rm for remove in the name of the file. Let's put that back in there. And I'm going to go back to the desktop. Now let's say that I want to delete the foo folder and all of the contents in it. If I go remove foo, it says foo is a directory. So a way that you delete a folder and all of its contents is by typing rm for remove recursively foo. And it deletes everything. So pretty much with all the commands, there's these little um, options, and you can read more about those by typing man for manual and then the name of the command. So let's say rm for remove. And it will show you the manual for that command and what it's used for and what all the options are and how to use them. Oh yeah, and the way that I did that was just by pressing Q for quit. That's because it's using Vim, and we're not really going to get into Vim today. I really like using Visual Studio Code. Um, I, th I don't know if I've ever really used Vim, but it's pretty nice to know if you ever have to do anything on a, a remote machine, and there's no editor, and you have to you know use Vim to edit that document. So again. You can type man for manual and then the name of the command, let's say ls, and then it gives you all the documentation and the options. And to get out, you just press Q. So sometimes you're going to want to run commands and they're not going to work because maybe you don't have the right user permissions. The way that you force run a command is root, which is the administrator of the computer, is by putting sudo before it and then you can type the name of the command. And it will ask you for the password. You'll notice that it doesn't show the password. And you press enter, and it will run that command as root. That'll make more sense when you start using NPM and you're installing packages on your machine and in projects, and maybe you have some user permissions not set correctly, and you have to force install some of the packages. So now we're going to get into NPM, which is Node Package Manager. In order to check if you have Node installed on your machine, just type Node and then V for version. And you can do the same thing for NPM. If you don't have Node or NPM installed on your machine, it's really easy. Just go to the website, download it, and install it. So one of the things that Node allows you to do is to write server-side language using JavaScript. So we've been using all of these bash commands to see what the directories are and all of that. And with web projects, you're probably going to want to do different things on your system. So npm is a library of packages that people have developed from around the world and uploaded um, to the service. So let's create a folder on my desktop. Make a folder called www. And we're going to change into that directory. And the way that you start up a new node project is by typing npm init. And it'll ask you if this is what you want to call your project, the package name, 
is this is this the version you can just keep pressing enter and you'll notice that we have one item inside of the www folder now if i type ls you'll see that we have a package.json and that's the file that's going to associate all of the packages with this project Oh yeah, cat is another command. Cat will just display all of the text of a file. So you can type cat and then the name of the file and then it will and then it will echo out its contents. So inside the package.json we have an object and it has a name, a version, all that stuff that we just entered. Now let's say that we want to install a package. If you've been playing around with JavaScript, you've probably ran across jQuery. So let's install jQuery in this project. In order to install a package, you just type npm i for install. Now, there's two options for this. You can either type save or save dev. Sometimes you'll install packages that are for the production or for the client, and other times you'll have packages that you've installed just to help you develop the project. In this case, it's jQuery, so we're going to use that um, on our front end. So we can just type save and then we'll type in the package name jQuery. Now if I type ls, you'll see that we have a node modules directory now, and we also have a package lock.json. Let's go into the node modules. This is where it's going to put all the packages that you install. So if I type ls, you'll see that we have jQuery in there. We'll go inside the jQuery folder, you'll see that we pretty much have all the stuff from their GitHub and we have a distribution folder and right there we have jQuery min.js if you notice I'm inside users J. Allen Cook desktop www node modules jQuery disk and I kinda wanna go all the way back to the www folder so I could do cd dot 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 and go like that or I could do something like this this little tilde actually stands for your home directory so that stands for users jdallin cook and I want to go to the desktop and I want to be inside the www folder so we're not going to go much more into npm we're probably going to get into that in later tutorials I just wanted to do a quick video to show you how to get around the terminal because we're going to be using a lot in our future projects. So if you like this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up and to subscribe to my channel. And if you're interested in getting involved more with the development industry, I've been doing some classes and some tutoring if you're interested. Feel free to drop me an email at jdallincook at gmail.com and I can get back to you with more information.